Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good day, and good evening to you. This is Cam Reporter with Robinhood Studios here with part three of our three-part series talking about camera exposure. So part one was all about shutter speed. If you want to learn about shutter speed, head to that video. Part two was all about ISO. If you want to learn about ISO, head to that video. So this video is going to be all about aperture. Now, it's kind of silly to have a favorite, but honestly, aperture is my favorite. If you want to adjust the exposure of your image, one of your options is adjusting the aperture of the lens. You can open it up to let more light into the sensor, or you can close it down to prevent more light from getting into the sensor. It works just like a human eye. When you first walk outside after being inside, the light's really bright and you have to wait for your eyes to adjust. What you're waiting for is your eyes to close down a little bit so that not as much light is entering, entering your eyes. So aperture is measured in what we call f-stops. So if you've heard uh, f2.0, f5.6, it's usually denoted like f and then a slash and then the number. So it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive at first, but the lower the number gets, so f2, f1.8, f1.4, the lower it gets, the wider open the aperture is, so the brighter your image will be. And the, the higher the number is, f18, f20, the darker your image is going to be. But it also has another effect, and that effect is on the depth of field. Now what the heck is depth of field? The easiest way to explain it, it's the blurred background. Shallow and deep. So if you have a deep depth of field, that means your background is not blurry. It means your subject may be here and the background may be 10, 15, 20 feet behind them, behind your subject, but the background is still pretty sharp. It's still pretty in focus. That's called a deep depth of field. When you've got more of that cinematic look where your subject's in focus, but your background is blurred, uh, that's called more shallow. And obviously the blurrier the background gets, the more shallow your depth of field is considered to be. And that's what aperture affects. It's not the only thing that affects depth of field, but it is one of the major things. What we're gonna do, we're actually gonna widen, we're gonna open up the aperture a little bit right now to show you the effect that that has on your image. So as you're seeing, I'm getting brighter, I'm getting brighter, and so is the background. And it'll be a little bit difficult to tell on this lens because of how wide angle this lens is. The background is getting incrementally blurrier. So I should still be in focus. We pulled focus on me, we did all that. So I should still be sharp, but the background is a little bit blurrier. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna crunch down the aperture more, okay? So we're gonna bring it back uh, past to where it was before and make it even darker. So you can see, yeah, it affects the image, it makes it darker, and it's probably the cleanest way to do so. Uh, but again, with a, with, an angle, with a lens this wide angle, it could be hard to tell the difference, but the background is now more in focus than it was when we were wide open just now. So this is why aperture is my favorite way to adjust uh, the exposure of my image, because it has the most subtle effect otherwise. You know, when you adjust shutter speed, it, it drastically affects the way that motion appears. We talked about that, motion blur and then the jerky motion. When you adjust ISO, it introduces noise into your image, makes it all grainy and disgusting. But when you adjust aperture, it's just depth of field and you have a lot of play. You have a lot of options, especially if you have multiple lenses. That's fantastic. So that is aperture. I hope that makes sense. Uh, as a note, as a final note on all three of these videos, a lot of times we deal with low light situations where there's just not enough light. Typically we don't have to shut things down because we have too much light. I mean, sometimes outdoors we have to do that. But in most of the situations that we run into, we have to add light. It's tempting to just crank your ISO or to sh throttle your shutter speed or to crank your aperture to get a brighter image, but sometimes you really just need to add light. You need to do, the, you know, do a little more effort on set, bring a lamp over, buy a couple of cheap little LED lights on Amazon, add light to your shots, and it's going to help you so much. It's always better to have more light than you actually need than it is to have not enough. Because if you, the saying in the industry, garbage in, garbage out. If you shoot garbage footage because you don't have enough light, no amount of finagling in post-production is gonna recover that footage and make it look as good as it could have looked. So hopefully this three-part series was helpful for you. It was fun to do for us and we can't wait to do more content for you. Once again, I'm Cameron Porter with Robinhood Studios and we will see you next week.